question one is asking us to compare our two rectangles, JKLM and NOPQ, and determine whether it's an enlargement or a reduction. Now, that is determined based on which rectangle is listed first. So it says it's JKLM2 NOPQ. So from here to here. So in this case, it is an enlargement because it's gotten bigger. Okay. And the scale factor, remember scale factor, we can use three different words for scale factor. When we're talking about scale factor, we're talking about the ratio or the fraction comparing the two sides. Now we're just, we're only given JK to NO. So that means if we wrote it as a ratio, it would be three to six. As a fraction, it would be 3 over 6 because JKLM is listed first, so that measurement goes on top. And we must always reduce our fractions, so I can reduce this to 1 half. Now, quite honestly, I'm not quite sure why they're listing it as a decimal, but they are but one half is the same as 0.5. So now if the rectangles were reversed, if it said we were gonna map NOPQ to JKLM, then my ratio would be six to three or six over three which equals two, two to one. Um, and it would be it would have been a reduction. So again, everything is dependent upon the statement. So you have to pay attention to what they're asking for. Okay. Um, number two, which results from a dilation of a scale factor of two? Negative two, sorry. Now, when we're talking about dilations in the coordinate plane. The negative does not mean less than in terms of value. You know, because if we're talking about money, clearly negative two is less than five. Okay? But when we're talking about the coordinate plane, the negative only means opposite, okay? It's the value, it's the actual number that determines whether a dilation is an enlargement or a reduction, okay? And the only time you're gonna have a reduction is if you have, that's gonna be a number between zero and one. So we're talking about a fraction or a decimal. That is the only time that you're going to have a reduction is when your scale factor is, e is between 0 and 1. Okay. So here, technically, it's a dilation of 2. But what the negative does is it puts it in a different quadrant. Okay. And actually, it puts it in the opposite quadrant. So um, the best way to demonstrate this would be um, obviously showing you on the graph. So in this case, negative 2, it's an enlargement and it's a rotation. Okay. If my scale factor was a negative 3 fourths, well, that number is less than 1. It would still be a rotation because it's negative, but because 
three fourths is between zero and one, it would that would be the reduction. Okay. Um, so number three, again, we are dilating at zero with a scale factor of two. So all that means is we multiply each x and y value by two. Okay, so a becomes six zero, because anything times zero is zero. Four two becomes eight four. And five one becomes ten two. So all we did was multiply. I multiplied both three by two and then zero by two. So every x, every value gets multiplied by two. Um, so a is six zero. So that's c. Four two becomes eight four, and that's d. And five one becomes ten two, which is b. Okay. Uh, number four. We're looking for the dilation centered at the origin that maps the point four comma six to the point five halves comma fifteen fourths. What is the scale factor of the dilation? Okay. So instead of being given the dilation, um, we're given four comma six, and the question is: is what number is being multiplied by? four to get five halves and what number is multi being, being multiplied by six to get 15 fourths okay um, so we can simply set this equation up as what number times four equals five halves? So that's just four x equals five halves. Um, now it's probably easier if we convert this to, well, don't do this on MCAS, but um, five halves is the same as 2.5. And it's easier to see easier to divide by with a decimal and what we will get is uh, 6.25 now if I wanted to do this as a fraction okay this is the same as 5 halves divided by 4 which when we divide fractions is multiplying by the reciprocal. So 5 eighths. Either answer would be accepted. So let's take a look at, um, I'm just gonna pick some random points here, okay. I'll just call this A, B, C, okay. Um, so A is at two comma three, B is at five, six, and C is at six comma two. Okay, now with a dilation of negative two, okay, Dilation of negative two means I'm gonna multiply each x and each y value by negative two. So a prime becomes negative four, negative six. B prime becomes negative 10, uh, negative 12 and C prime become negative 12 
negative four. Okay, so, so a couple of these points are going to go off my graph, but you'll get the, so a prime is going to be negative four, negative six. Uh, negative 10, negative 12, so I'm a, lo a little off the graph here, but that's okay. And C would be negative 12, negative 4. And if you notice, that the letters, the orientation um, changes. So this is actually a rotation. Okay, so that's what a negative dilation does. It creates a translation. I'm sorry. A negative dilation creates a rotation, specifically a rotation of 180 degrees. And you'll notice that my red triangle is bigger than my blue triangle, and that's because two is greater than one, so that's gonna give me an enlargement.